Hello, welcome to my Elements of Art and Principles of Design video slash presentation. Um, I made this video because I a lot there's a lot of videos about the principles of design and elements of art out there, but I felt like a lot of them were geared towards certain um, domains and not enough were focused on classroom uses. So I just decided to make my own. Partially also because uh, there's a lot of disagreement on what the five elements and principles of design are. So without further ado, I just wanna jump into this video. So as I said, there's kind of disagreement on how many there are and, and what they are. Here's a list of the ones that I wanted to include. So I have uh, for the elements of art, we have line, shape, color, value, and texture. And I'll be doing the highlighted versions. Uh, but so, there's also form, space, contrast, and size, to name a, a few others that are also included in the elements of art. I just want to focus on the top five in this video. The principle of design has a lot more disagreement and uh, variation between the ones that are used. And again, I'll be focusing on the highlighted ones. And I believe that the three, the three big principles of design are balance, pattern, and emphasis. And I'll also be talking about space, proportion, unity, and rhythm. Um, harmony, proximity, scale, movement, contrast, hierarchy are also often included in the principles of design. I've seen five, I've seen a uh, list of seven, of eight, of nine, 10, even 11. Um, some of these could be combined. So for instance, I believe that unity is very similar to harmony and sometimes can be uh, used interchangeably. Um, proximity and space are often included to be the same, even though that they can speak to different specifics, uh, their broad elements are similar. And contrast is sometimes found in the principal design, though I believe it makes much more sense being in the elements of art due to its nature uh, and connection with value. A movement, for instance, is often connected with rhythm. Sometimes people see those as different things. Scale, size, those are you know, sometimes used as well. Proportion and scale could be uh, used together. Uh, and then hierarchy is something that really speaks to uh, design elements rather than the other forms of art. So, but the principles of design are, are useful in any medium, really. Uh, drawing and painting, photography, design, three-dimensional art like sculpture or pottery. All of these different mediums use the principles of design and elements of art. Some might include it in a slightly different lens, but also they share a lot of different definitions as well. So for instance, with line, we have a, a photograph here by Michael Drexler, where this is really speaks to the idea of leading lines, how lines can draw you into an image. And this is very powerful and often used in, in the photography medium. And it's also part of painting and drawing and other uh, and design and, and three-dimensional art as well. Uh, but one of the things that stands out maybe in the differences between photography and drawing is that in photography, lines just tend to be uh, come up as a nature of being a line. So if you're photographing lines, it's just about kind of capturing lines that move throughout a piece. Whereas drawing gets very specific and focuses on the quality of line. Drawing and painting will look at, is it a curved line? Is it a bold line? Is it a straight line, right? What is the quality of line? And these are come, some of the differing elements that, that show up in how mediums kind of look at it. Um, visual literacy is a big element of what this is all about. Uh, the elements and principles of design, specifically the principles of design, very much deal with uh, making and composing art. So where you place things, how you make them, what kind, you know, what's the quality, what's the color, what's the line look like. These communicate visual aesthetics, but they can also have deeper meanings uh, and or metaphors as well. And it also speaks to the power of visual literacy. Just like everybody needs to learn how to read in order to navigate and have power in their worlds, so it is true with visual literacy. It's a visual vocabulary that's increasingly vital in our world of a, of a digital revolution where our brains uh, evolved for a time that did not involve two-dimensional surfaces, two-dimensional screens that are meant to look three-dimensional. And this is very important because your brain evolved during this time. It doesn't necessarily understand that it's looking at a flat screen and it makes assumptions about its world that are best for survival in a world that doesn't exist anymore. 
It's why we see these two tables on the left as being very different in size and shape. Um, the one on the left looks like it's going further back into space. Uh, so therefore it looks longer and thinner. And the one on the right looks like it's more wide and fat. But the truth is that those two tables are exactly the same size and your brain is being tricked because this is a two dimensional surface. The drawing is on a two dimensional screen, but it's meant to look three dimensional and your brain doesn't know about that. It thinks that those are three dimensional things. And if you, if you don't believe me that those two tables are the same size, take a look at this. So you can see that when they move the green, it's exactly the same size. And your brain is just playing tricks on you. It's making assumptions. And a lot of this speaks to visual literacy. The more that you understand visual literacy, visual elements that are in the world, the more uh, power you have in navigating that digital revolution. So without further ado, let me get to the elements of art. Uh, the ones I'm about to go over are line, shape, color, value, and texture. And let's begin with line. As I said, um, line can vary in its meaning across different mediums in the painting and drawing realm what we're really doing is talking about the quality of line so in that image on the top left you can see that there's a lot of different types of line different colors of line some are kind of like scratchy lines some are more smooth lines long some are straight some are curved some are bold some are thin uh, in photography just capturing lines can be a very strong element uh, and creating some things like repetition and pattern, which are principles of design that I'll talk to in a little bit. Or the image on the bottom left has a lot of rhythm in it because it has repeating elements, but changes and has movement in it. And if we look at the artwork of de Kooning uh, in the top right portions of the screen, you'll see his painting of a bull. Those lines have very thick elements to it. They're very strong lines. He's painting a bull and therefore he gives it strength with those quality of line versus the image on the right where the lines are a lot thinner and kind of have more of a contour element to it. And you can see right there just the difference in, two, in the same artist applying a different texture of line uh, to create a very different feeling. And that's something you wanna think about when you're, when you're thinking about line is lines that are bold tend to feel like they're closer to us. Lines that are thin tend to feel like they're further away from us. And how can we use those lines? Can we use those lines to lead people into a direction, maybe a focal point? Shape, um, line is a one dimensional thing. Shape is a two dimensional element. So if a line, if you have just a line going across that's one dimension, if that line comes around and meets itself into a square, triangle, whatever shape, it becomes a shape and it becomes two dimensional, right? So uh, it's really important to be aware that you are three dimensional beings, but you live in a world that you see as two dimensions because your, your world can be displayed on a flat screen. And shape is, you know, just what it sounds like. It's about recognizing shapes. Uh, I have the, the artworks of Son Sonia D Delauny uh, in the middle there that focuses a lot on different types of shapes, overlapping shapes, how they come together. The works of Andy Goldsworthy on the bottom, Earth, Earth Artist, uh, uses shape a lot. There's a lot of elements of value and color as well in his work and line, uh, but shapes are a repeating element and a lot of pattern that comes in, uh, comes into it, which we'll talk about as well when we get to the principles of design. So recognizing and finding shapes in nature, in the world, or creating them in a way to uh, create interesting compositions. And in the top left, we have uh, Piet Mondrian, a very famous artist that simplified his forms down to an abstracted element where they just become pixels. Uh, in the digital world, we can think a lot about how pixels would relate to that. Moving into color, which is another element of art, another big one. Uh, again, it's very self-explanatory. It's the use of color. Think about color schemes. So in the bottom left image, you see that triangle going from what are usually uh, conceived as being the primary colors. Although if you're talking about additive or subtractive types of color, um, the, the more appropriate colors for the primary colors would be magenta, cyan, and yellow, uh, as more shown in the top right color wheel. But color can be used in a lot of different ways. It can be used to create emphasis, which is a principle of design we'll talk about. Obviously, with that image in the middle, we're drawn into the circle, into the light, but it's also yellow surrounded by red and then black, so it stands out more. Um, think of the colors of the rainbow, the light spectrum, 
right? Use of color is very important. How we place colors next to other colors changes the context of those colors. And a lot of the elements and a lot of the principal design are very much focused on context. Moving into value, um, value is, you know, kind of think of the shades of a color could have different values, but value simply is a movement of gradient from a light to a dark and everything in between. This is going to stand out when we talk about shading, but it also comes into play with looking at photograph as well, photographs as well, because there are photographs that have a, a, a strong value range where you have your whites, your light grays moving into darker grays into the darker, darker grays, and then completely black like the image in the middle. And this can, is very important to create form. So when you have a sh when you have a line, it's one dimension. When you have a shape, it's two dimensions. So a circle would just be two dimensions. But this ball in the bottom left corner has form. That's because it has value that makes it look three dimensional as existing in a three dimensional space. The opposite of having value is being would be high contrast or positive negative space, like the photograph uh, on the right done by Mason Arthur, where he photographed a black individual with a white uh, tank top shirt on a white background, and that has a high contrast. There's not a strong value range. It goes basically from bright white to bright black. It's a positive negative image. So value speaks to the range of shades that you have uh, within an image. Texture, another element of art, um, I think an often overlooked element of art is very important. The bottom left picture is of kind of, uh, it's rust with some blue paint over it. You can see the elements have worn out this, whatever this metal is over the years. And that texture is very powerful. Uh, photographing textures is a, uh, a really great subject. And just walking around and seeing where there's rust, where there's water, um, shiny elements, right? C uh, contrasting possibly with, with rougher elements. But in painting, uh, your brush strokes speak a lot to um, texture. So we have a very famous painting by Van Gogh on the left, Starry Night, how he used a lot of little brush strokes, a lot of different colors to create a certain type of texture versus the, uh, the painting in the middle where it's much more smooth and, and, and uh, lightly applied and there's not as much variation between the colors, creates a much different texture versus the painting on the right that's kind of done in like with, you could see elements of a palette knife being in there, scratchy elements, it has a very rough texture to it. And painters should, uh, and artists should seek to create texture in the arts that they're making. That's a very important element of art. And in, even in drawing in the uh, bottom image, you can see how we can draw different textures as well. And a lot of times texture is implied where you can kind of feel the texture, even though you can't actually feel it because it's on a two-dimensional surface. So let's shift to the principles of design. Uh, I'm gonna go over balance, emphasis, pattern, space, proportion, unity, and rhythm. Um, I'm gonna begin with the big three, in my opinion, the strongest ones that are often evident in, in artwork and utilized and really speak to how uh, our eyes are drawn to them. A lot of this has to do with how our brains evolved and what our brains have evolved to like seeing. It's important to realize that you see with your uh, brain and not with your eyes. So with this, uh, with balance, we have three different types of balance. We have symmetry, which means that it's the same on the left side as it is on the right side. You have asymmetry, which means that it's not the same on the left uh, as it is on the right, even though the image of the rocks in the middle has balance to it because those rocks are balancing. Uh, that would also be an example of earth art. And this was done by Dimitri Otis, this photograph. Um, but it also has balance because those rocks are balancing. So it's asymmetrical, but it has balance as well. And then there's radial balance, which means that it's the same all the way around. Think of mandalas, think of flowers as being radial. Um, and again, thinking of the context of how we can have metaphor and aesthetic speak to this, the yin yang or yin yang, as a lot of people say, uh, is a metaphor for balance in life when you have kind of asymmetrical elements two contrasting elements coming together to make a whole. This would also be a good example of unity or harmony. Um, the image in the bottom middle is a good example of symmetry, which is the same on the left as it is on the right. 
And then um, the same thing with the photograph on the top right, we have a lot of elements of line in this piece. So this could also be something that speaks to line, but it's a, it's a symmetrical element in that it's the same on the left as it is on the right. Balance is a really big, powerful uh, principle design. It creates structure because there's strength in, in balance. And think of like pictures of buildings that really stand out and buildings feel very strong, not just because of their, their size, but photographs of building also have strength because balance has strength. Moving on to emphasis, which is a really another important principle design. Um, not that it's mandatory, but a lot of strong, good works of art have strong focal points. We like to have our eyes be able to focus on something. It brings calm to otherwise chaotic images often. But emphasis really speaks to, or focal point, where your eye is drawn. What do you see first? What is the most powerful element? And I spoke to this earlier, how color can be a way of making things stand out. We can use a variety of the elements of art and principle design to create an emphasis. Um, like the yellow and orange painting in the bottom left uh, stands out. The circle stands out amongst the black circles. So we're obviously drawn to the yellow and the orange. Um, the posters done by Ethel Trick, uh, which there's a close up of the triangles on top. Uh, the, the red and yellow and orange triangle stands out amongst all the grayscale triangles. There's another example of one of his posters there, Proportion. Uh, I highly recommend looking up his posters as, for other examples of the principles of design. And then we have a photograph on the right here, uh, which also depicts a strong focal point in that uh, the, the, the leaf is framing our focal point, which is an eye, and eyes are often strong focal points. We're more drawn to circles uh, than squares. A lot of that has to do with human head is circular, our eyes are circular, and humans are drawn to those elements. We're drawn to people's eyes. So if there's an eye in an image, it's often that that will be the focal point. And because it, it, uh, this photograph blocks out all the rest, it makes for an even stronger focal point. And you also have kind of that leading line in the leaf leading to it. Pattern, another very strong principle design that often comes up in, in artwork, um, is really about repetition. And pattern is exact. So if we look at the A, B, A, B, A, B, A, B, A, B, you know what's coming next, right? It's going to be A. If there's more variation in that pattern, it starts to become more rhythm, which we'll speak about in a little bit. But when it's exact, it's pattern. And pattern is a very overwhelming to our eyes. We're drawn to it because it's, it's, it's intense, right? Pattern has a lot of intensity to it. It can radiate when you use color in certain ways. And it's very powerful in that it draws our eyes. And those first three are really all about that power that uh, they, they possess with how the human eye uh, is drawn to it, how the brain is interested in those images. Space or proximity, which could be different, uh, speaks to two basic elements. So how you're using a space, where are things lined up? Uh, if we get into composition, we get into elements of like the golden ratio, um, size and scale, or the rule of thirds, meaning that where the focal point is, is in the middle, or is it in top right, bottom right, left right, uh, bottom left corners, right? So where are you placing your focal point? So with the image uh, in the bottom middle, you have a cluster of circles that are in the top left corner. So that is not a, a centered focal point. So the use of space is creating a lot of negative space in the sense that there's a lot of white. Were you, with the image on the next to that, the circles were like drawn in much closer to it. We're cropping into it. So how are you using that space? Do you wanna have a lot of negative space, a lot of white space, or do you wanna draw and move closer and create intimacy? But there's also positive negative in the sense that the photograph of that creek going through the snow, through the land that has a lot of snow, the white is negative space and the black is positive space, but really it's a high contrast image where that's all we have. So that black, uh, the black water, the really dark water creates a line that kind of moves through this space. And it's also why another element of, of optical illusions for do you see a, a candelabra in the image or the two faces illusion? I'm sure most of you are familiar with that. Are you looking at the negative space or are you looking at the positive space? What do you see? Do you see both at the same time? Um, I'm always a sucker for posters that use great positive negative space. 
Um, and the, the Wolverine poster is a good example of that. And what's kind of cool about that is if you look at it in certain ways, you could see how that could easily become like two Batman images looking at each other within that space and how it's used. But it's a very simple use of positive negative space. And again, we can also talk about the spacing of things, the proximity of things. How close are they together? So do you have like the circles close together or are they far apart, right? So proportion speaks to the scale, but really it's about the relationship of scale um, to each other. So for instance, in that painting with the chick, we know that the proportion is kind of off because that baby chick is much larger than the human and that's not how things are in reality. And so we're drawn to that image because it is playing on our sense of proportion versus the, the photo in the middle um, with the two dogs, you have basically the largest dog breed next to the smallest dog breed, uh, Chihuahua and a Great Dane. And again, this plays on our sense of proportion in the sense that both are dogs. One is very large, one is small, and it makes for an interesting picture. But this also speaks to, in the, in the arts, the proportions and scales of things that we see, um, knowing that the human head is symmetrical and how things are, are proportionate to each other within the human head, given that um, everybody's eye, uh, everybody's head is five eyes wide. Um, everybody's eyes are in the middle of the head and the layout of the nose and mouth is all proportion in every human being. So proportion is a really important principle designed to be aware of and how things scale and relate to each other. Unity is about things coming together to make one. Um, this could be expressed as harmony. Um, I like to focus on the term of unity because I think it kind of conveys a wider, uh, a wider breadth of different elements in this principal design. But in the deer, you can see that there's a bunch of, of kind of long lines, uh, oval, oval-esque kind of lines that come together. They're separate pieces, but they're coming together to make one image of a deer. Um, a very famous kind of example of this would be two hands coming together to form one. And in the image in the top uh, middle, it also kind of emphasizes that world element, bringing it to another level um, to kind of create a sense of unity, ver both visually, aesthetically, but also in metaphor. Uh, in the image on the bottom, you have a lot of different shapes coming together to create one shape. So a mandala would have a sense of unity in that there's a lot of different elements patterned to it, but it's all coming together to make one. But again, we can also have this in metaphor uh, in the top right photo, this is a photograph from an ex-student of mine. Uh, you can see it, find him on Instagram at Bailey Black uh, Photo. Um, this is the image taken of recent uh, Black Lives Matter protests. And you can also create a sense of metaphor in that all of these people are separate individuals, but they're coming together under one cause. So there's a sense of unity. Rhythm, as I mentioned with pattern, has similarities. But rhythm is really when there's a sense of movement and sometimes it's expressed as movement alone, but I like to call it rhythm. Um, and so you have repeating elements, but there's a movement to them, right? So if you look at the lines uh, that are moving in the image on the left, they, they change direction. So if it was just those lines going straight up and it was just like A, B, A, B, A, B, you would, uh, that would be pattern, but because there's change in that, because there's variation, because they move downward and upward, it becomes rhythm. And I often say that you can kind of hear rhythm when you're looking at an image in the sense that it creates like a sound. The picture of the Eiffel Tower in the middle, for instance, has a lot of different principles of design coming together. It is symmetrical. It has elements of pattern, but those lines and movement of line, which is an element of art, create rhythm, right? like the image on the top right where you have repeating elements, but there's kind of that, that swerve curved element to it that make it have more of a rhythm element. And this kind of concludes uh, the principles of design video for you today. And like I said, there's a lot more. You can look it up, Google principles of design, look for different examples. There's a lot of videos on YouTube that are also really strong that will give you a different sense of it. But these are the basics and thanks for watching.